What are we going to get into today? Well, today, I haven't done this in a while, so, but I think it's very important. So what we're going to get into today is we're going to get into safety. Safety for distilling at home. Uh, hey, we got a lot of new distillers out there and got a lot of old distillers. You could be reminded of a few things. Hey, if you know it, you got it in your heart, that's fantastic. But if we can help one person, we, we got our job done. But first things first, welcome to Stowers and Brewing. My name is Randy and this is a channel that's all about home distillation and brewing. Uh, well, let's get some homework out of the way first. Hey, a lot of you subscribe to the channel and that is fantastic. But there's a whole bunch of you that have not. So, hey, if you get a chance, please hit that subscribe button down there. We would really appreciate it. Hey, and that's how we can keep content coming out. That's the only way that uh, YouTube will recognize us is by them subs. All right, so let's get started. I know some of us don't want to hear this stuff, but we need to. I mean, overall, this hobby is very safe. But there is some risk out there that you need to be aware of so that you can make sure that you can stay away from there. Stay away from them. Uh, so I come up with 20, um, I wouldn't say, just 20 ideals of safety that to keep in your mind, okay? Uh, they're in no particular order. They're just as I come up with them. Uh, so let's go through them and I'll put them on a list so I wouldn't forget them. All right, so number one, clean your new still. You, all right, you just bought a brand new still. You know, you're new to the hobby. You're excited about using this, but you got, there, there's some preparation work before you actually start making some delicious spirits. All right, so make sure you clean your still. Uh, you could use 50, 50 mix of uh, vinegar and water and then run that through your still. Uh, you could take a, um, you could do that, and then maybe after that you could do a, do a sacrificial uh, sugar wash. You know, sugar washes are relatively cheap. Uh, run that through that, and then that's gonna get all the junk. When they manufacture stills, you know, there's solvents and there's uh, uh, fluxes and all that stuff. Yeah, they do a good job cleaning, but we want to make sure it's really clean. Okay, so that was number one. All right, like I said, no, this is no particular order. Number two, no more than 40% ABV in your still. And what I'm talking about mainly is you're doing a uh, stripping run, all right? Boom, 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 you do your stripping run, and you're going to read the still. So make sure that it's no more than 40 ABV going back in your still because it is a, it could be a fire hazard. Um, and, and all you gotta do is dilute it down with good clean water, you know? Uh, that would usually work very well, all right? All right, we gotta keep going so we get over this, get through this. <laughs> all right, no closed systems. All right, and this, this could be a lot of different ways, but no, uh, what I mean by a closed system is, okay, you always have to have a path of vapor to come out of your still, okay? Uh, if you don't have a path or you didn't let the vapors out, you're actually sitting on a bomb and we don't want that. So, make sure that everything's open and clean. Uh, and like one thing you could do is say you pack your, you know, you're using a column still and you pack it with whatever you're packing you want. Don't pack it too tight. Make sure you can breathe through that uh, tube on that column. Make sure that it's a, you know, clear path for the vapors. All right. All right, so let's go on to the next. Never leave a still unattended. Well, that's, that's self-explanatory. Uh, I like to, if I'm running still, if I'm in the morning, I want a cup of coffee. I have all my coffee ready. So I, and while I'm you know, working on my still, and uh, if you need something to drink or, or whatever, don't leave your still unattended. Um, things couldn't go wrong. Uh, say you're in the middle of collecting and you know, you could go in the house and then uh, overflow a jar. And then now you got 
flammable liquid running all over the place. And especially if you're heating your stove with open flame, you know, like propane, uh, you got a good fire hazard. So you want to make sure never to leave your still unattended. All right, that's, that's an important one there too. Yeah, you know, in case you start to puke, or it, it, it's a whole bunch of different stuff that can happen. All right, talking about propane, number five. If you're using propane, use it in a well-ventilated ventilated area. All right, that's kind of self-explanatory too. A lot of this stuff is, it should be common sense, you yeah. know. All right, so if you're using an electric to heat your still, uh, make sure you use a GFI circuit. Uh, we are dealing with electricity and we're dealing with liquids. Um, they do make a, if you don't have a GFI outlet, they do make these GFI things you plug in the outlet and then you plug your, let's say you plug your still into it and it is a GFI. All right, uh, what's GFI stand for? Ground fault interrupter, I think? I think that's what it is. And basically, it's a, it would just break the circuit in case water would come in contact with anything. All right, and then one thing going along with that that I put on my notes was, if you are using electric, inside your still, you got a heating element. You wanna make sure that heating element stays covered with liquid. They're not supposed to be open to the air when they're used. Uh, but also remember, you're taking, so if I got my eight gallon still here, I put six gallons of mash in it, and I'm gonna take out about a gallon or so. Make sure that you have enough liquid after you take the alcohol out that that element is still covered. All right? All right, let's keep going. Number seven, clean up your spills ASAP. Uh, like I said before, we were dealing with uh, flammable liquids, all right? If you spill something on the table, make sure you wipe it up, clean it up, all right? Just to, so we don't have no problems. All right, number eight, check for leaks at all the joints. Now, easiest way to check for that, a lot of people say use a mirror, hold a mirror up there. If you got, it will fog a mirror up if it's got a leak. You know, all this stuff is invisible, so use a mirror, you can see the leak, okay? Uh, like and I just said that before. Alcohol flames are invisible. You you can light light alcohol. Yeah, you might see some blue. You might see some yellow sometimes on the tail. But overall, they are invisible. All right. A lot of this stuff is dealt with fire. Okay, but that's that's one of our biggest concerns. Uh, number ten. All right, you're doing the stripping run. Right, and stripping run, you're gonna run as hot and heavy as you can because you know you're just you're not worried about the flavor, you're not worried about cuts, you're not worried about anything, but get that alcohol out as fast as you can. Well, you got to be careful of how hard you run versus how much your condenser can handle. So if you're running really hard and you're you know, you're getting good uh, stream coming out, when you look real close you could be getting vapors out too. And vapors are flammable, they are explosive, all right? So you gotta make sure you keep an eye on that. Uh, I know sometimes you can get down and look at different angles and you'll, you'll see if there's any vapor coming out sometime. So just be careful of that. Uh, and that, that goes to number 11. Number 11 is uh, distill in a well ventilated area. You, know, you wouldn't want to distill in a little closet because there, hey, there is fumes and there's uh, all kind of different stuff that could be dangerous. So distill in a well ventilated area. Number 12, sounds uh, self-explanatory. Fire extinguisher. Might be a good idea to have one around somewhere in your brew house or wherever you're distilling. Um, so make sure you have a fire extinguisher. All right, number 13. All right, we're on, we're over halfway done. 13, um, be mindful of hot or boiling liquids. Yes. Uh, let's say you are finished your run and you want to get everything cleaned up, you're tired, and you go to pick up 
your still pot to empty it out. Remember that that liquid in there it just got done boiling. If you would have to spill it on yourself, you're in big trouble. All right, it's going it's going to hurt. Uh, and just as a side note on that, make sure if you got um, young distillers, kids running around, make sure they kind of stay clear of all this stuff because yeah, you know, they could grab something that you know is hot, but they might not know. So. Just, just make sure that uh, the kids are clear. All right. So, and one more thing. If you can, let your soap cool down before you empty it. Uh, a lot of times I'll get done running and, and I'm, I'm tired. I'll come back and clean my still tomorrow after it cools off. And you'd be surprised. It's still warm. Not hot, but warm. All right. Uh, now, here's one that people ain't going to like but it does make sense. Don't drink and distill. I mean, I'd be lying to tell you I didn't have a taste or two, but you gotta be really careful. You know, don't, don't sample too awful much while you're running the still, all right? Uh, we gotta keep our heads in the game, you know what I'm saying? There's plenty of time for sipping and tasting afterwards. All right, number 15. All right, make sure your still is stable. Uh, you know, you got your still pot uh, and you got a tall column on it and there, there are people, you got hoses hooked to it and all different kind of stuff. And it could actually tip over easily depending on, it all depends on how you're using it. Uh, just make sure it's stable, even stable when you take a certain amount of liquid out of it. Um, so uh, just be mindful of that. All right. All right, number 16. Number 16 is label all your stuff. You know, I, and I'm a firm, well, I'm bad for it, is I'll remember what that is. Ain't that the famous last words, I'll remember what that is? You won't remember. So, hey, make sure you label it. And uh, <laughs> it's so easy to do. Just have, you know, I use that blue uh, painter's tape and a magic marker. Hey, psh, stick it on there. It don't have to be fancy. All right. So label it. Uh, because, you know, you could have some real high ABV stuff and it could be dangerous to drink. Nah. But the biggest thing would be you don't want nobody else to drink it either, all right? Uh, let's see what else. And I got written down, make sure your four shots and heads, if you, if you save them, uh, a lot of times I like to save them for camp, to start campfires and stuff. Um, so make sure that they're labeled. And any alcohol that you store, put the ABV on there. Yeah, you know, 50%, 90%, 100%, whatever the case may be. Not 100%, 100 uh, proof. Whatever the case may be, we'll put the percent on you, 50%. All right. Okay, number 17. We're, we're getting down there. When aging with wood, they say stay away from the bark of the wood because the bark, they say, can contain some toxins. And that wouldn't be no good, and plus it, it wouldn't make your spirits taste too good either, I, I wouldn't think. So, stay away from the bark. All right, number 18. All right, number 18 is pay attention to your still. Pay attention to the temperatures. Pay attention to your cooling water. Uh, pay attention to your output. Just make sure you know what's going on with your still. And that kind of goes along with keep, uh, don't leave it don't, you know, whatever it was. <laughs> I'm having a brain fart. All right, uh, make sure you attend your still. All right, and plus, you know, that that is great information to put in your brain. You might not write it down, but you could. That how your still runs today, you're gonna compare that to tomorrow and the next day and the next day, all right? So just pay attention to what your still is doing. It will help you get better at your craft uh, and you will better at your craft, better at your spirits, okay? All right, number 19. Uh, this one's just like a, 
a good idea of upgrades. Uh, they have two upgrades that you could do. One of them is a pressure relief valve. So that would help if you would get a clock somehow that would you know release the pressure if it you know if it went too much. So that's a good one, and I don't think they would be very expensive. And the other one is a vacuum relief valve. Uh, let's say that you're running with a thumper. And when you go to shut down a still with a thumper, if you don't have, if you don't break, like say a pipe open, and the still starts cooling down, and it can't suck air back, you have the potential of sucking in your still, and wouldn't that just piss you the hell off? Right? Yes. So that would be a good, they got vacuum relief valves. All right. Ooh, last one, number 20. This is, I guess, the one that most people are afraid of, methanol. All right. My question is, have you ever had methanol? Well, of course you have. If you've ever had a beer in your life, if you've ever had wine in your life, uh, you've had methanol. Methanol is produced during the fermentation of alcohol, not in a still. The still does not make uh, methanol at all, it can't. Uh, the, the purpose of a still, it makes nothing. All it does is try to separate things, all right? And in turn, when trying to separate things, you know, it's trying to separate uh, the different, uh, like alcohol, methanol, all that stuff from the water. We're trying to get all the ethanol out and water stay behind. It's concentrating in. So that's what happens is, all right, the very first things that should come off your still is methanol because its boiling point is lower than ethanol. So... By that reasoning, the first things we're going to get off is that stuff. Hey, and this stuff tastes like crap. So we don't want it anyway, and that's why we can get rid of it, is because we can. So, with that in mind, like I said, we've all had methanol to drink. It's in very, very low doses, like in a beer, which is not very much in a beer because it's within, uh, say you make a five gallon batch of beer, you know, you're only gonna get, I, and I'm not sure of the parts per million, but it's it's very little amount. So it does not hurt you, except for the hangover. And they say that's part of it is your hangover is from the methanol. Uh, in spirits, we get rid of it because we can. So my rule of thumb, is, and I consider methanol uh, four shots and heads i consider them the same thing so my rule of thumb is if i got a grain mash i like to throw collect one ounce per gallon of mash uh that is what i'm gonna get rid of now it goes along with it let me back up and if you have a fruit mash i'd say one and a half ounces per gallon of mash uh and that's just your starting point but you're also, you, you know, you taste it and you smell it and you, you'll be able to tell. And the further along you get in this hobby, you'll get better at it, I believe. So that is my rule of thumb on that. All right. In closing, there's some things we want to keep in mind. And, and that's why we want to do this. Um, things to keep in mind. In this, we want this hobby to be safe because... Well, of course, we don't want nobody to get hurt. Uh, we want to keep the reputation of this hobby at a high standards. Um, because what happens is, if the, this hobby, there, tr there is mo uh, movement trying to legalize this hobby, and if we get some people get hurt, it's just going to set it back, back because you know they will just. Uh, put that out there. P guy got hurt to steal illegal alcohol. We don't want none of that. Plus, the, the main, and the main thing is we don't want nobody to get hurt, right? And we'd also, we don't want no alcohol abuse. 
<laughs> I was trying to be funny, but it wasn't. All right. So, and, and like I said before, this is a safe hobby, but there's a few um, things to help you out. Uh, to stay safe in this hobby, try to keep in mind, if there's other things that's in this hobby, I'll put them on my list that you can think of. But overall, I've never been hurt doing this hobby. Uh, don't plan on it. I don't want to see anybody else hurt. All right. So what else do I got? Uh, I think that's about it. I, I think I yacked about enough to you. So I guess the last thing I got to say is, hey, thanks for stopping by. And we'll see you next time here on Still Works and Brewing. Cheers, everybody, and stay safe.